our country be filled with prosperity for all or just a chosen few? Only you can decide that. Our next president should be a person who has been preparing for the job all of her life. When we send Hillary Clinton to the Oval Office, we also need to send Patrick Murphy to the United States Senate. And Robert Tager to the House. Pasco County, you need to keep great people like Amanda Murphy working for us in the State House. We need John Larkin as our property appraiser. And I can tell you, we need Barry Horvath on the County Commission very bad. We have seven days to make history. Seven days to get your family, your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, anyone who is registered to go and vote. The polls are open now. And I encourage everyone, when you leave this rally, go and vote. The polls are open. There's an early voting place just around the corner here in Dade City at 1423 6th Street in Dade City. It's open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. every day until November 5th. So ladies and gentlemen, it's time to vote. It's time to vote for ability. It's time to vote for respect. It's time to vote for honor. And it's time to vote for caring. It is time to vote for Hillary Clinton for president. Thank you and God bless you. We've already started doing that here, folks, in Pasco County. Pasco County is ahead of this curve with our American Manufacturing Skills Initiative. Our AMSkill program that we have in West Pasco is preparing members of our community to fill jobs in the manufacturing industry. 
This industry is projected to face shortfalls because the talent is retiring and aging out. These jobs are high paying jobs that can lift people out of poverty, provide reliable income, and help grow this great economy of ours. In a 21st century economy, no one should have to endure getting paid less because of their gender or their skin color. That is why we must elect Hillary Clinton, our next president. She's committed to growing our economy, making sure that everyone, regardless of race or gender, gets paid fairly for the work that they do. So I know you've heard it a lot today. You probably could tell me where, but how many people haven't voted? All right, here we go. We have one week left to make sure that Hillary Clinton is our next president. And it's up to all of you, all of you that have already voted, make sure that you go grab a neighbor and drag them out. We have an early voting location right here in Dade City. After today, I want you all to drive around the corner to the East Pasco Government Center located at, can you give me the address yet? Four, two, three, six, Sixth Street. Open seven to seven. every day until November 6th. So everyone, let's break that glass ceiling. Go vote. Go Hillary. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senator Bill Nelson. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming out for Hillary today. I mean, it just keeps going and going. Thank you. I want you to know that why it's so important that you are here today and all of this energy that you are obviously uh, showing because that energy now in the next week needs to be translated into talking to our friends and neighbors, talking to uh, the people that are registered to vote, might be new registered, but they haven't gone to vote. And we've got the opportunity, early vote, so that you don't have to worry about getting them to the polls on election day, in fact, you can get them to early vote all the way up through this coming Sunday. So please, please do that. Then there's another group that has ordered what in the old days we used to call absentee vote, but it's now vote by mail. But that absentee vote is still sitting on their kitchen table. And so you have got to remind them about that. Now, let me tell you, Florida, I wish it were going to be 10 points, Hillary, but it's going to be closer. And that means that we can't take anything for granted. Uh, you all have given me the privilege of serving Florida for a lot of years, and, in, and I thank you for that. And in the course of those years, you've given the Nelson family the privilege of knowing the Clintons, which is now over three decades of knowing them. Our daughters have grown up together. 
They stay in touch. And so I pretty well can give you a recommendation on Hillary because we've seen them both in public and in private. And I'm telling you that what you see in public is also the private Hillary. What you see is what you get. By the way, that's not what you always get with some elected officials. As you well know, you see one thing and then they act another way. The other thing that the Nelson family has so admired the Clintons and particularly Hillary, when the going gets tough, guess who is really tougher and who is still standing? Now, I want to give you another recommendation because Tim Kaine happens to be one of my best friends in the Senate. Now, this guy is the real deal. And a good example of that is that Tim, when he was in law school, he took a year off. He went to Honduras as a Catholic missionary. He taught kids to weld. His dad had taught him to be a welder. But what was so prophetic about that was that year in Honduras as a missionary, he became fluent in Spanish. And now, years later, in the campaign, going all over America, speaking fluent Spanish, doing the interviews with Telemundo and Univision, and you get the picture. I want to tell you something else about Tim. I took him uh, one day, he was in Orlando for several other things, and I said, Tim, we've got to go over to the Pulse nightclub. He went over there, outside the nightclub is this makeshift memorial, still with a lot of mementos of the people who were killed, uh, some flowers. It's still there to this day. Tim went over there and he was visibly moved. And when he turned then to go back and talk to the waiting press, he could not speak for a moment. He said, when he finally composed himself, he said, I thought that I would never have in again the worst day of my life as I had as governor of Virginia at Virginia Tech when scores of people were gunned down by a crazed madman. He said, but now I know with 49 souls lost here, uh, I am going through another tragedy. You can see in the soul of a person, you can see their character when they are confronting those kind of events. And so I can recommend to you without reservation both Hillary and Tim. Now, I want to ask you a couple of questions. And I think it's going to dramatically uh, draw this election. And by the way, we're not just talking about the top of the ticket. We're talking about all the way down. And how about starting with Patrick Murphy? All right. I want to ask you, because an election is a choice, you have to make a choice. You all obviously have made that choice, but you need to get this word out. When your friends and neighbors make a choice, do you want somebody as leader of this country who just flies off the handle, or do you want somebody that's prepared? I think we want a president that's prepared, and after those three debates, are you convinced she's prepared? Amen. Amen. All right, now, the president happens to be also the chief of state. 
That means the president has to deal with about 180 other chiefs of states of other countries. And so the question is, do you want somebody who has no idea about what foreign policy is and all the nuances, or do you want someone who is an expert in foreign policy? Of course you do. Of course you do. All right. Have you ever seen it as ugly as it is? No. All right. So that, that brings us to another question. Once you get through all of the rough and tumble of a campaign, and I agree with you, this is the ugliest that I've ever seen a political campaign. Once you get through and you're elected, you've got to govern. And what do you think it takes to govern? Do you want, therefore, someone who divides America or someone who unifies America? Does that remind you of Stronger Together? All right, now finally, when you come together to try to govern, and that means bringing all of our people together, no matter what their party registration or if they're no party affiliation, you got to bring everybody together. That takes a certain personality to be able to bring people together in bipartisan consensus, particularly in the Congress, in order to achieve a consensus in order to govern. So the question is, do you want a president that goes around doing nothing but insulting everybody else? Or do you want a president who respects others, who reaches out, brings people together, who tries to conduct themselves and what we know is the golden rule, yeah. do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's the way, that's the way that we are going to govern America in these perilous times. And I want you to know how much I appreciate all of you being here. Go as if there's no tomorrow all the way to 7 p.m. on election night. And then I'll tell you, if we do that, what we're going to be singing Tuesday night a week, we're going to be singing Happy Days Are Here Again.
Hello, Day City. How are you? It's a really pleasure for me, a great honor to be here with all of you. My name is Alicia Machado. Es un honor estar con ustedes hoy en día. Uh, you know, I was, I was at home with my mom and, and my daughter watching the first presidential debate when I was absolutely surprised to hear Hillary Clinton say my name. It was such an honor. During the debate, Hillary said about me that, and I quote, she has become a U.S. citizen and you can bet she is going to vote this November. Well, she's right. Like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> like, okay, I lost my speech. <laughs> like all of you, I'm excited to be voting in this election. And you know what? I could not be prouder to cast my first presidential vote for Hillary Clinton. Estoy muy orgullosa, muy orgullosa de votar por primera vez en este gran país y votar por Hillary Clinton. <laughs> I was the first Miss Universe after Trump bought the pageant. I was such a gift, an honor to represent my country, Venezuela. And to be Miss Universe 1996. But I was, I was only 18 years old, a little girl with 18 years old. And there was still so much I didn't know. Trump was overwhelming. I was scared of him. He made fun of me, and I didn't know how to respond. He told me that I looked ugly, and I was massive. He even called me names. He said to me, Miss Piggy, Miss Housekeeping, Miss Eating Machine. Soon, soon it became a joke. Alicia Machado was the fat Miss Universe. It was really painful for me. He was cruel. For years afterwards, I was sick, fighting back eating disorders. Yo solo tenía 18 años. Le tenía mucho miedo. Siempre fue muy agresivo y cruel conmigo. Y constantemente se burlaba de mí, llamándome con calificativos para hacerme sentir mal para ridiculizarme delante de la gente, con sus bromas de Miss Piggy o Miss Housekeeping. Se burlaba de mí, me decía que yo era la Miss Gorda, la Miss Fea. Eso me hizo mucho daño. Por muchos años después, sufrí de desórdenes alimenticios y de problemas de autoestima. It's clear, it's really clear, that he does not respect women. He just, he just judges us on our looks. He thinks he can do whatever he wants and get away with it. Well, now I'm standing here on behalf of women and Latinos across the country. <laughs> Americans who have been horrified with his dangerous ideas and vision of America. And together we are going to say loudly and clearly, no Trump is not getting away with it. Hila 
that is, Hillary has been fighting for women, children, and Latinas, just average people like me and you, her entire life. When she was still a student, she traveled across Texas to register lat Latino voters and make sure they were able to make their voices heard. When she was first lady, she organized the first ever White House conference on Hispanic children. And when she was in the Senate, she fought for she fought for comprehensive immigration reform with a path to citizenship. Those are just a few reasons why I support Hillary Clinton. She's going to fight to fix our broken immigration system so families stay together and everyone can take part in the American dream. That's important to me and so many other people in Florida. She's going to make sure that women finally get equal pay for their work. And she's going to work to make jobs better for families so everyone can be a good worker and a good parent. I've been talking to voters signing up volunteers, and making calls. Like me, can see here today, there is so much enthusiasm for Hillary across the state. So to all my fellow Floridians who have the right to vote, vote early, vote today. And to all the Latinos, this is our election. This is our election, Latinos. Y nuestro voto, y nuestro voto es nuestra fuerza, es nuestro poder. Así que vamos todos, vamos todos temprano a votar. Let's work our heart out so we can finally say, Madam President, Señora Presidenta, on November 8th. Now is my really honor and my pleasure to introduce the next president of the United States of America, Hillary Clinton. about being here. Thank you all for this really warm, wonderful welcome. And I, I think on behalf of all of us, I want to thank Alicia Machado for that introduction and for sharing, sharing her story with us. Uh, Alicia will be voting for the very first time in this election. And I am very grateful uh, for her support. I'm also delighted that we're joined today by your great Senator, Bill Nelson, and his wife, Grace. I also want to thank Representative Amanda Hickman from the Florida State House, Michael Cox, Chairman of the Greater Pasco Chamber of Commerce, Michael Ledbetter, uh, who is the Pasco County Democratic Executive Committee Chair, and his wife, Beverly. And thanks to retired Colonel Wilson Elton Blount for his Pledge of Allegiance. And thanks to all the elected officials here. 
And I especially want to thank all of you for not just joining us, but helping us to get out the vote in this last week. It's almost hard to believe, isn't it? There are only seven days left in this election. So are you ready to vote? Are you ready to volunteer these last seven days? I hope, too, that you are ready to elect Patrick Murphy to the United States Senate. Patrick, who has been in Congress, will be an independent voice for Florida families. And I am so excited to think about what he could do. Uh, because unlike his opponent, he's never been afraid to stand up to Donald Trump. Now, somebody asked me the other day, why do you keep coming back to Florida? Just look around, folks. I mean, <laughs> it is uh, it's a beautiful place, uh, and I have lots of friends. But it's also really important in this election. Florida can decide who our next president is, which will affect the nation and the world. And I want to make sure that every voter in Florida spends these next seven days thinking about what's at stake in this election. Because honestly, I believe this may be the most important election of our lifetimes. One week from today, we will be choosing our next president and commander in chief of the United States. I don't, I don't think the choice could be any clearer. You know, I have spent my career fighting for children and families. I have served in the United States Senate, served on the Senate Armed Services Committee. I was in the Situation Room when we brought Osama bin Laden to justice. I represented you as your Secretary of State going to 112 countries, negotiating with friend and foe alike. I am ready to serve if you give me the great honor of being your president. that I think that stands in contrast to my opponent. And, you know, maybe for you, if you think about all of the issues that separate Donald Trump from me, it could be his dangerous statements about nuclear weapons. When a journalist told Donald Trump that people were worried about how casually he talks about nuclear weapons, he said, well, then why are we making them? And I have to tell you, yesterday, I was in Ohio, and I was introduced by a gentleman who was one of our officers in charge of launching nuclear weapons, if the order ever came from our president. And what he told the crowd, it was a big crowd at Kent State University, I think every voter should hear. Basically, his name was Bruce Blair, he said that having had the responsibility of sitting in a bunker, being responsible for the codes and the keys to our nuclear weapons, he knows that when a president makes the order to launch a nuclear attack, there is no appeal. There is no veto. And that is why he has joined with dozens of former Air Force officers to send a letter to say, we need a president with the temperament, the steadiness, the calmness to be in charge of nuclear weapons. And therefore, they cannot support Donald Trump because he does not have the temperament to be our Commander-in-Chief and handle those responsibilities. So when you think about voting, 
early voting this week, voting next Tuesday, responsibility for our nuclear weapons is on the ballot. So is immigration. Do we want to round up millions of people who are here working, raising their families, as he has suggested he will do? I don't think so. I think what we want is to bring them out of the shadows so that they can't be exploited by employers, by employers like Donald Trump, who refused to hire Americans and hired undocumented workers so he could pay them less. I don't think that's right. Now, maybe for some of you, what Donald Trump said about prisoners of war will be enough reason to vote against him. Somebody who questioned the patriotism and the service of John McCain because he was a prisoner of war. We need a commander in chief who respects the service and sacrifice of the men and women who wear our uniform. Or maybe for some of you, it's what he said about a judge born in Indiana who just happened to be assigned the case brought by people who were defrauded by the phony Trump University. And so Trump said, well, we can't trust him because his parents were born in Mexico. Now, Paul Ryan, the Republican Speaker of the House, called, well, but wait a minute, he called what Trump said about that distinguished federal judge the definition of a racist comment. And then Trump went on to attack a Gold Star family whose son, Captain Khan, died defending our country simply because that family was Muslim. And then let's not forget, Trump spent years, years insisting that President Obama was not born in the United States even after the birth certificate was produced. Honestly, if this were something new, I, I think we'd all be asking ourselves, well, wh what does he have against President Obama? Or what does he have against me? But this is not new. I know I'm reaching out to Republicans and independents as well as Democrats because I want to be the president for all Americans. And here's what I want you to tell. I want you to tell your Republican friends. In 1987, Donald Trump took out a $100,000 ad in the New York Times to criticize President Reagan. He said, our leaders are the laughing stock of the world. So this is a man who thinks that he is better than President Reagan, better than President Obama, literally better than anybody, I guess. And when you think about it, what he said at the convention, I alone can fix it, runs counter to who we are as Americans. We work together. So there, there are many reasons why I think it is fair to conclude that Donald Trump is unqualified and unfit to be president. But today, I want to just spend a few minutes focusing in particular about what he has said and what he has done to women and girls. Because, you know, any of you see the debates? You know, I, I stood next to Donald for four and a half hours during those three debates, proving conclusively I have the stamina to be president of the United States. And during those debates, you know, Donald always used to say, oh, what have you been doing for 30 years? And I always found that kind of odd because he could Google it and find out. <laughs> and so, you know, I've been a lawyer and I've been a first lady and I've been a senator and I've been secretary of state and... <laughs> I, 
I've been a wife and a mother and a grandmother and a friend and a churchgoer. And for my entire life, I've been a woman. And when I think about what we now know about Donald Trump and what he's been doing for 30 years, he sure has spent a lot of time demeaning, degrading, insulting, and assaulting women. And I got to tell you, some of what we've learned, some of this stuff is very upsetting. I would frankly rather be here talking about nearly anything else, like how we're going to create more good jobs and get the economy working for everybody, not just those at the top. How we're going to make college affordable for every single family. Because I have a plan that if your family makes less than $125,000, you will not pay tuition to go to a state college or university. And if you're above that, it will be debt free, and we will help you pay back the debt you already have so you can get out from under it. But I can't just talk about all the good things we want to do because people are making up their minds. This is a consequential choice. So we've got to talk about something that frankly is painful because it matters. We can't just wish it away. And you know, a lot of his supporters don't like to hear this. I don't blame them. If I were supporting him, I wouldn't want to hear it either, to be honest. But I got to tell you, I learned way back in elementary school, and I, I learned it in Sunday school. You know, it's not OK to insult people. It's not OK. And look at what he does. He calls women ugly, disgusting, nasty all the time. He calls women pigs, rates bodies on a scale from 1 to 10. We just heard from Alicia. She was Miss Universe when Donald Trump owned the pageant. Well, he said she put on some weight. And it made him angry, so he called her Miss Piggy, called her Miss Housekeeping because she's a beautiful Latina. He brought a bunch of reporters to a gym to watch him order her around to exercise. Now, you know, he also said this is somebody who likes to eat. Well, I have to say, who doesn't like to eat? <laughs> I mean, really, can we just stop for a minute and reflect on the absurdity of Donald Trump finding fault with Miss Universe? But you've got to ask, why does he do these things? Who acts like this? And I'll tell you who, a bully. That's who. And thankfully, Alicia refuses to let such a small person get her down. She knows that Donald Trump, Donald Trump doesn't get to decide her value in her eyes and in the eyes of her family and her friends. But what about our girls? What about girls watching all this? What happens to their confidence, their sense of self-worth? If you've got a daughter, a granddaughter, a sister, a mother, a wife, a good friend, someone like this becoming president who insults more than half the population of the United States of America, and what about our boys? This is not someone we, we want them looking up to. You know, not so long ago, I was the mother of a teenage girl. And you know, every day, I tried to make sure that she knew she was smart and she was capable. And I'm doing the same thing with my granddaughter and my grandson. Because let's be honest here, the world has a way of telling our girls exactly the opposite. They don't look right. They're not thin enough. They don't act right. No one will like them unless they change their clothes or straighten their hair or stop being bossy or whatever the criticism might be, right? And I remember when Chelsea was a teenager, 
I would wait on the second floor of the White House in the long hall that's there for her to come home from school. And sometimes we only had a few minutes together, but before she'd run off to talk to her friends or do whatever she was planning to, I, I would figure out kind of how, were the, how was the day. You know, we'd talk about what was on her mind. And that time together was really valuable to me as a parent. Because we parents, and I know there are a lot of parents here today, we work hard to give our kids a sense of confidence to send them out into the world believing in their own value. And it really is important that we don't let anybody take that away from them. And we want them to be strong. We don't want them to feel bad about themselves. And we've got to work hard to make sure our boys, just like our girls, have that same sense of positive energy, not negative, not tearing people down, lifting people up, and respecting women. In fact, all of us should respect each other in our country. And so when I look at my granddaughter and my grandson, I am on the same mission. I want them to know they're loved, they're cared for, they're respected. I want them to develop a good work ethic. I believe in hard work. And I want them to go out and prove themselves in the world. But that's what I want for every child. I have spent my life doing everything I could to help kids and families. It will be the mission of my presidency. I will get up every day in the White House trying to figure out how can we knock down the barriers, overcome the challenges, so that people living here in Pasco County can get ahead and stay ahead. So I know there's work to be done. We can't do it with just words alone. We've got to do more to stop treatment about women being somehow objectified. And oh my gosh, when we heard that tape and we heard what he does to women, I, I'm not going to repeat it. But you know what Donald Trump was bragging about. Grabbing women. Mistreating women. And I have to tell you, since that tape came out, 12 women have come forward to say what he said on that tape is what he did to me. And then we heard his response. What he does at his rallies is to go after those women all over again, insulting them. He said he, poss he couldn't possibly have said those things because the women weren't attractive enough to assault. Look at her, he said about one woman. I don't think so. About another, he said she wouldn't be my first choice. He's also on tape bragging with the radio personality, Howard Stern, about how he used to go backstage at his beauty pageants, and he would barge in on women while they were getting dressed. He said he did that. He said he did that to inspect them. That was his word. And he said, I sort of got away with things like that. And sure enough, Contestants have come forward to say, yes, that's exactly what he did to us. Now, as bad as that is, he didn't just do it at the Miss USA pageant or the Miss Universe pageant. He's also been accused of doing this at the Miss Teen USA pageant. Contestants say that Donald Trump came in to look at them when they were changing. Some of them were just 15 years old. We cannot hide from this. We've got to be willing to face it. This man wants to be president of the United States of America. And our wonderful first lady, Michelle Obama, spoke for many of us. when she said Donald Trump's words had shaken her to her core. For a lot of women who've gone through something like this in your lives, that's brought back painful memories. And for men who would never, ever talk or act like Donald, it's been shocking 
to see this. He tried to explain it away as locker room talk. Well, I'll tell you what. A lot of professional athletes stood up and said, not in our locker rooms. That does not happen. But I guess the bottom line is he thinks belittling women makes him a bigger man. And I don't think there's a woman anywhere who doesn't know what that feels like. He doesn't see us as full human beings with our own dreams, our own purposes, our own capabilities. And he has shown that clearly throughout this campaign. Well, he is very wrong. He is wrong about both the women and the men of this country. He has shown us who he is. Let us on Tuesday show him who we are. We can stand up for what we believe, what we want for our children and our grandchildren, what we know is right. And you can go down the list of everything he has said. He doesn't believe in equal pay. He thinks pregnancy is an inconvenience. He won't raise the minimum wage. And he said if he comes home and dinner is not on the table, he gets angry. Instead of supporting women who are out there supporting their families, he wants to make it even harder. Well, I have a message for him. We're going to fight for affordable child care. We are going to fight for equal pay for all people. We're going to fight for paid family leave. We're going to fight to make sure everybody gets rising wages in America. And that's important because so many people are still struggling, still working hard, raising a family, having a hard time getting all of their bills paid. And that's especially true for minimum wage workers, who two-thirds of whom are women. So we've got work to do, my friends. I'm excited because I know we can do this. And I will stand up, and I will fight for you. I will work for you. I will give my heart to this mission of making our country all it should be. Because instead of Donald Trump's dangerous and divisive vision, Mine is positive, optimistic, hopeful, and unifying. But I can't do any of this without your help. Early voting has already begun. Almost 26 million Americans have already voted. And that includes 4 million right here in Florida. Americans are voting for the kind of better future we can make together and voting on all the issues that they care about. It may be my name and Donald's name on the ballot, but everything you care about, our security, our economy, bringing our country together, the environment, <laughs> clean water and clean air, here in Dade City, you can vote every day from now until November 5th from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. In fact, right now, the East Pasco Government Center, just a few minutes drive away, you can go there right after this rally and vote. Because we need everybody to stand up in this election. If you've got a mail-in ballot at home, send it in when you get home today. Don't wait to send it back. Talk to your friends and family and your neighbors, your coworkers. And, you know, Donald Trump's strategy is pretty simple. He says he wants to suppress young people from voting, women from voting, people of color from voting. I mean, that's a lot of people. By showing up with the biggest turnout ever, we will send him and everybody a message that that's not who we are. Now, I know here in this, this county, in this larger region, you probably know some people are going to vote for Trump. And here's what I want to ask you. I want you to talk with them. Ask them what they care about. Ask them what kind of future they want for our country. Because 
Donald Trump's economic plan is slashing taxes on the wealthy and big corporations. I have said I want the wealthy to pay their fair share, and I will not raise taxes on anybody making less than $250,000 a year. So there could not be, no matter what you care about, a bigger difference between me and Donald Trump. And I hope that you will come out and volunteer for these last seven days. We are signing people up for volunteer shifts, making calls, knocking on doors. It really matters. Turnout matters. Please go to HillaryClinton.com to see how you can get involved. And here's what, here's what I want to leave you with. You know, I feel like so many of you that our country already is great, but we can make it greater. And the main reason America is great is because America is good. We are a big-hearted, generous people, not a small-minded people. We know that if everybody works together, we will get farther together than if we separate people, we push them down, we engage in all the negativity we've heard too much about in this campaign. But sometimes the fate of even the greatest nations lie in the balance. And for America, this is one of those make or break elections. It really is in your hands. And I hope you will think about how you will feel the day after the election on November the 9th. Are we going forward together, or are we going to be pulled backwards by someone who wants to bully us? And I hope, I hope you will think about how together we can make a difference. I want to be your partner as well as your president. I want us to create the best possible future for our children and our grandchildren. That is what I will work my heart out to do, and I hope you will help me to make a better, fairer, stronger America where we prove once and for all that love trumps hate. Thank you all.